And if any historians here, you recognize that once in Rome there was a smallpox. Brother Pies, and this ain't the first time if you learn your word, if you learn history, we'll recognize there was the Black Plague. Come on, somebody. Anybody here ever heard of SARS? I'm trying to bring some perspective. Come on, somebody. Somebody here has heard of SARS before. A few of us got scared a few years back, Brother Jackson, because of the Ebola flu. Come on, somebody. Y'all not with me yet. We got to bring perspective to this thing as saints. We can't collapse under the weight of what's going on. But we got to stand in faith. We got to stand. I wish I had a few witnesses in here. We got to stand in victory and recognize, yeah, I'm going to wash my hands. The grandmama told me to wash my hands. Yeah, I'm going to cover my mouth when I cough. Because grandmama told me to cover my mouth when I cough. Verse. 
says that I have given unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Say it with me. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth, come on somebody, shall be loosened in heaven. We got to understand that it relates to the afterlife. It's all God's prerogative. God decides who he's going to save. God decides, uh, Sister Yancy, who he's going to condemn. God decides who he's going to judge. God decides who he's going to elevate. God decides who he's going to allow to sit on his right side in eternal life among people. And then God decides who he's going to put on his left side who's going to be condemned to hell. That's God's power and God's power alone as it relates to the afterlife. But the good news is as it relates to somebody shout this life. As it relates to this current life. As it relates to the contemporary affairs of this life. God has given us both authority and power to discern and to control come on somebody what happens in this life and so I don't want anybody to leave this house today or anybody watching us on live stream not to realize you have the power to bind up fear in your life y'all know what me at and the word to bind means to forbid y'all know what come on means to what somebody shout forbid it means to make unlawful. Right now, what are we trying to say? Witchcraft in your life ought to be unlawful. Come on, somebody. Uh, curses in your life uh, ought to be unlawful. Uh, more children dying young uh, ought to be unlawful. Come on, somebody. Family members dying uh, lost in their sins uh, ought to be unlawful. Uh, anybody in my house my church, my school dying from corona ought to be unlawful anybody catching AIDS anybody dying of lupus ought to be unlawful divorces and monument of love ought to be unlawful well it will be unlawful if you bind that thing in the name of Jesus but the flip side is you also have the power to Somebody shall lose. You gotta lose some things in this time. Don't get the world to allow you to close your mouth, to close your power. The Bible says you can lose. So for me in my house, for me in my church, and for me in my family, and for me in my friends, we ought to serve the Lord at 26, 39, the Bible. Oh, <laughs> 
is enmity against God, which means he is hostile against God and the people of God, which means that regardless of what you think your last name is, regardless of how anointed you think you are, you got to learn some warfare. Regardless of how much you shout and dance for the Lord, you got to learn some warfare. Regardless of how much money you got in the bank, you got to learn some Sarah, regardless of what folks say how pretty you are, you're going to learn some warfare. Regardless how cute you think you are, you're going to learn some warfare. Why? Because Paul said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I'm not sure who I'm preaching to. The reason my granddad, the Reverend Pastor Doctor James Moton Sr. was able to do the works that he did because he was strong in the Lord. Y'all know with me. The reason that Pastor Lawrence Odell Hudson was able to serve the Lord for as long as he did because he was strong in the Lord. What am I trying to say today? The word says, finally my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. If you come out of yourself and get into God, you're going to have all the power that you need. You're going to have the strength that you need. You'll be just like the three Hebrew boys. Somebody here knows God's strength is proven. When you give him your situation, look at somebody say, give it to him, give it to him, give it to him. God will prove himself time and time again when we give him our situation. He proved himself with Daniel locked up in the lion's den. But Daniel slept like a baby. Come on, somebody. Because God can always prove himself. When Esther finds herself with her nation about to be taken under. But Esther says, uh, maybe I have come for such a time as this. And God proved himself. There was Jesus on the cross. Folk got his clothes. Throwing dice over his clothes. Folk got a spear in his side. Folk got his hands in the nails. Here is Jesus still saying, God, forgive them. For they know not what they do. God proved himself. And what am I saying? On today, when you look back 12 months from today, God will approve himself. I'm still going to be here. You still going to be here. They still going to be here. Memphis still going to be here. And Corona will have been put in God's choke. Our third, our third, final, our third and final point as I rush on to close is we've got to trust in the world's strongest man. you got to trust in the world's what? Strongest. Sister Seymour's strongest man. And not only must we put sin in a chokehold, and not only must we learn how to fight the good fight of warfare. Oh, yes. But finally, isn't it good to know that there's a man stronger than any other man? Yes. There's a man stronger, Brother Smith, than any drug. Yes. Uh, there's a man stronger than any disease. I know we got some folk in here who have cancer. Come on, somebody. Yes. Uh, there's a man who is stronger than a corona a virus. Oh, yes. Today's text says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first what? Bind the strong man. So saints, the only way that you go into a strong man's house and bind him is that either you are stronger than him or you can tag team, come on somebody, with somebody who is stronger than him. There are two paths by which a human soul comes to 
to God. We typically come to God through the path of great love, or we come to God through the path of great suffering. Y'all yeah. yeah. know this be true. It's some folk who would never show up, Brother Terry, to church unless they got some problems in their lap. I wish I had a few witnesses here. And what I found out is, is that regardless of those two paths, eventually we end up in the path of great suffering. Because I'm sure there's not a parent in this house today who has not suffered over the love, I wish I had a few amens, of their children. Come on, somebody. There's not a man or woman in this house today who has not been in love before or properly in love before who have not suffered doing that love. And so eventually there is something about suffering that brings us back to God. And when you're young, you think you ain't ever going to suffer. When you're young, you think you're smarter than to fall into the same as for previous to you. But there's something about life that brings us eventually to a point of suffering that then brings us to God. What am I trying to say today? That yes, we're feeling these feelings of desperation. We're feeling feelings of uh, devastation. And this is not an exaggeration. All over the globe right now, there are feelings that people are wondering what's happening, what's really going on in the human condition. Yes, I would agree that data suggests that over 303 thousand people right now have contracted the virus. Yes, I would say that the data suggests that over 13,000 people have died so far of the virus. Yes, I would suggest that we have not heard about the panic button. We have not looked at the panic button. We have become the panic but, but the good news is, it's causing people to focus on one thing. It's causing the world to desire one thing. It's causing the world to believe that one thing is better. And the whole world is saying, Lord, save us. Keep us healthy. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God's plan. Yo, I'm not saved. That's God. Oh, <laughs> 
strongest man in the world is Jesus. And he's strong enough to put the spirit of Corona, the spirit of fear, in a chokehold. Satan, the devil, is like a seeking lion. Satan is the author of all evil, of all crimes, of all fear. And you ought to be glad today that we believe in one who is greater than our fears. Come on, somebody. Who is greater than our diseases. And as long as we come together as a family, as long as we stay together as a family, and as long as we recognize that all of this is yet a part of God's plan, that saints, we're in a training ground. And my hope is that when all of us make it over to the Jordan, when we cross over, and those saints, were crucified upside down, which is their testimony. And those saints of old age who were thrown in the lion's den, the saints who had to cross over the middle passage, we want to make sure that our testimony and standing up for Jesus yeah. is just as strong as their yeah. testimony. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That's what we say today. We're going to stand for Jesus. And we have to stand for him all by ourselves. The door of God's universal church is open. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, God. Yo, we come this morning, dear Lord. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Another opportunity, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise and worship you, dog. Yes, praise and worship. But dear Lord, once we leave this place, remember the opportunity we had, dear Lord, when we, when we leave this place that a lot of people didn't have this morning, Father. Yes, yes. So Father, when we leave this place, I ask each and every one of us to be vigilant. Be vigilant. And be understanding and have compassion. Yes. And remember, it's not about you. It's about what you do for other people. Yes. So check on somebody. Do something for somebody. Yes, yes. Love on somebody. Yes. But most of all, be a good representative of God. Yes. Need another blessed ass your son Jesus.